my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So as you can see, I have got a really, really beautiful project for you today. This is for the Cricut Maker with the knife blade. And as you can see, it is a gorgeous advent calendar made completely from scratch. Now I am sharing this design in the Cricut community and I will link to it below. So you can see we are in design space and I just want to very quickly go through the design with you. So this is the dimensions for the actual box piece. Now I've used basswood 1 16th but of course you could use balsa wood 1 16th as well. Here we have the shelving unit so we've got two long pieces and then there's seven shorter pieces as well. They all interlock with each other and then they fit in the box. And then finally we have the template for each individual pull out box as well. So this is all included in the link below. So you'll be able to get all of these in the design space community. Now they are all down in your layers panel. When you come in this will be hidden and all you need to do to unhide it or to hide it is to click the little eye. The same with our interlocking ledge pieces. So when you actually come into design space all that will actually be available to see is this but as I say everything else is in your layers panel. So to cut our box and our shelf pieces in basswood 1 16th takes a total cut time of 2 hours and 10 minutes. Obviously if you're going to use balsa wood that's going to be reduced slightly uh, but those are the times that I've obviously equated when I've cut. Now I've been using basswood sheets from Hobbycraft. I've been using bass at 1 16th and it is a 6 inch by a 24 inch board. This took me three of those sheets to cut out. That comes to a total of £22 from Hobbycraft. Now I will link to that in the description below. Now I have however been looking on eBay and Amazon and I have found them available from China in those sizes, obviously the wait time is is longer, uh, but the price is dramatically reduced. However, I have not personally tried those, so I am not going to link to them because I haven't personally experienced how well they work. But I just wanted to put it out there that if you did want to try this and you didn't want to spend the £22 on wood, that there are other alternatives out there. You just need to have a look around. But obviously I can't recommend them because I haven't tried them. And I find it's easier in my design space to actually get a shape and I'm going to get a square and I'm going to make it 6 inches by 12 inches although my sheets I was using were 6 by 24 obviously I was turning them around so I was doing 12 inches length at a time and I can then bring my pieces into my square and work out how it's all going to go and I can then colour coordinate all my pieces that way so I know before I get to make it how my mats are going to look so for example like this you can see that I've now worked out how they're going to cut on my wood so I can colour coordinate them so that all the pieces that are able to cut out in one slab I can do it that way and I just find it's easier that way. I haven't done that for yourselves because people will be using different lengths and different size woods depending on what they're able to get. So once you've figured it all out you can then go to make it. I at this point am not showing my individual boxes because we don't need to cut those out yet. So we're just going to go to make it. And then as always you want to make sure that you come in and you adjust where everything is on your mat so that you're going to get the best amount of cut and it's all going to work the way that it should. We can then go to continue. We're going to browse all materials. 
go all the way down to wood. I'm using basswood 1 16th, but as I say, you could use balsa 1 16th as well. You are going to make sure that obviously if you're going to cut in wood that you are using the Cricut Maker knife blade. So you can see that I've got my basswood 1 16th and I've already placed it on my purple mat. I've gone in and I've masking taped all the way around and you also want to go in with something like your fabric brayer just to make sure that it is nice and adhered to your mat. You also want to make sure that your wood is matched with design space. So you want to ensure that wherever your design space is placed to cut in your virtual mat, that your wood is placed on your actual mat so that they match up. So you can see I've got all my box pieces cut out now, so my actual advent base pieces. So we're going to work on the box itself first before we put our slots in. So everything will just slot into place. I do recommend putting some glue along the tab edges. I'm actually using art glitter glue today. I find that this works just as well as Gorilla Glue and actually it dries quicker. Uh, so I actually really like using the art glitter glue with the basswood. And you want to hold it in place for about five minutes just to allow it to become tacky. And then I like to leave it to dry for about an hour just so that it is nice and all glued together. So you can see I've got my slats all cut out and you're literally just coming in and placing them. You may need to give them a little bit of a wobble but they will just go in there. I do advise doing the two end pieces first, this will just stabilise it and then working your way down each of the sides and we can just place that in and you can then just, you may find that you need to kind of adjust them slightly but you can then do that and we're just going to come in and again we're just then going to slot them into place and that is our advent calendar kind of block area already now. Uh, so that is then ready to be painted or spray painted. I'm going to spray paint it. Uh, so I'm going to prime it first with some white spray paint and then I'll put the colour on there. So just want to very quickly talk about the spray paints that I use. I, for a very long time, was using just local ones from my local DIY store and also from Wilco's as well. However, I discovered these on Amazon and I will link to them below. These are a brand called Cobra and they're actually for uh, kind of spray paint artists. They're really, really reasonable. I think they, they range between sort of four and six pounds. They average about five pound a tin. They are amazing. I mean, these spray paints are fantastic. Uh, they go on great, uh, they dry great. They're not kind of runny or too thick. Uh, they're not patchy. Obviously the way that you're painting makes a difference, but I absolutely recommend these spray paints. They are so reasonably priced and I just think that they're brilliant. So I just wanted to say, before I put my first coat of primer spray paint on, I always go in with a fine piece of sanding paper and just sand it down. And then after I've done my first coat and it's dry, I then just go around and sand again. 
it's normally fine you may end up with a few kind of bits that are sticking up a few kind of patchy grainy areas in terms of the wood so it's always worth just going through with your sandpaper so that when you put your color coat on it's nice and smooth sometimes when you put your color coat on you may find that you've still once it's dry you've still got a few rough areas again just use your fine sandpaper and you can then just go in with a light second coat so we're now ready to cut out our individual boxes you can see that it's already done for you I've already done everything you need and I've added the score lines as well so we can then go to make it you can actually get four of these onto a 12 by 12 sheet so we're just going to do that whether you're using pattern card or 12 by 12 uh, cardstock or 12 by 24 cardstock which I'm using today which is the Cricut cardstock uh, you can get four of these onto each 12 by 12 sheet so we can then go to continue I'm cutting out using the setting cardstock for intricate cuts now you'll see that it automatically comes up with the scoring wheel which is fine if you are in the States but over here in the UK we still do not have the scoring wheel if you load your mat now and it then scans it will tell you that it can't go any further because you haven't got the scoring wheel in so if we go to edit tools you'll then see that we're able to pick the scoring stylus and we can then continue we can then load our mat and it's going to cut them out for us so for my actual pull out boxes I'm using the Cricut cardstock this is the primary sampler they are 12 by 24 inches this is the sorbet sampler and this is the jewel sampler as well I'm going to be using the red and the green from the primary sampler pack you are going to need four sheets of these so I'm going to do two full sheets in red and two full sheets in green now they're not particularly thick but they are okay for what I want to use them for if you want to use thicker cardstock of course you can you can use anything you can use the shimmer paper uh, you could use the corrugated card uh, in the corrugated card samplers you get corrugated card and then you get uh, like normal card as well uh, so any cardstock that you want to use you can use it's completely up to you I as I say I'm using this today it's a little bit thinner uh, but the colors are right for what I want and it'll be fine for putting sweets in and pulling them out so I'm just using a 12 by 12 mat so I'm going to place my cardstock onto it and I'm then just going to use my roller and of course the rest of the cardstock is going to hang out of the machine but that's absolutely fine I'm going to get four on each 12 by 12 mat and then I can just turn my card around and just cut the other end as well so these little boxes are so so easy to put together you're just going to come in and fold on all the score lines and you also want to make sure that you fold the tabs as well I'm going to use some art glitter glue today and I'm just going to come in and add some glue along the tab lines I can then glue my back and my sides together and they will fit perfectly oops that was my front but it's still the same process anyway we can then add some art glitter glue to the other end of tabs and then again we're just going to come in and hold those in place and we've then got our little box
So for my pull handles, I've just got some twine here. Of course you can use ribbon and get miniature doll's house door handles. There's so many different things that you can use. So to keep these uniform, all I'm doing is I'm going to come in I'm going to loop it round and I'm then going to place it in my pinky and I'm going to pull. I'm then going to go in with a second knot and again just pull and make sure that that is nice and secure. I can then just snip the ends. I'm going to feed my loop through the inside of my box so it comes to the outside. And then I can just manipulate my twine so it sits on there nicely. And that's just how I'm making my pulley loops for these. So you can see that I've actually changed my cardstock. I've kept my red and green, but there's too much red and green going on. And I've actually got some pattern cardstock here, which I got from Hobbycraft, and I will link to it in the description below. So I've used that uh, just to kind of break up the color block a bit. So now we're going to do the top of our advent calendar. Now this is not going to be included in the community project for the simple reason that my trees have actually been uploaded from a design bundle a kind of clip art set and lots of people will want to do different things on top of their advent calendar. So I'm not including this part but everything else in terms of making the box is included but I do want to show you how I'm going to kind of assemble it and how I'm going to go about putting it onto my box. So I've got two trees here these are just from one clip art set and I will put the link to it below. Now for the inner tree I have had to kind of come in and amend it slightly. I've done some slicing and uh, kind of changed the perspective of it a little bit but that is just having a play. I've then got three blocks here so these are all the same size so I'm just going to come in and I'm going to place them first of all I want to place the big one and then I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab this one I'm just going to hide this tree and I'm then going to align and centre and this will make sure that they are perfectly in sync with each other so then if I bring my big tree back and I hide this square I'm then going to highlight and weld. I'm then going to bring back my little tree and then the other square as well. I can then hide this welded one and again I'm going to highlight and I'm going to weld. Those two trees are now completely in sync with each other, which is exactly what we want. I've then got the top of my box here and I've just made a rectangle, slightly smaller, which will then cut out and it's going to sit on top of the top of the box. So with my third piece here, I want to actually make slits in the top of the box insert so that my tree can then sit inside that. So I'm just going to unlock and I'm going to change the height to 0.2 which is chipboard because I'm going to cut all these pieces out using 2mm Cricut chipboard. I'm then just going to lock that back up and I'm going to duplicate it just want to change the colour on this quickly so it's a bit lighter. I'm then going to bring these in and I'm just going to work out how far apart I want them to be. I'm then going to highlight a line and I'm going to center horizontally. So it will keep them in the position but it will make sure they are in the center of my box. All I'm then going to do is I'm just going to hide this one. I'm going to highlight and I'm going to slice. I'm then going to bring this one back. Again, I'm going to highlight and I'm going to slice. And that will then give me 
two slots where I can then insert my trees. And that's how I'm going to do the top. So you need to kind of work out what you want on top of your advent calendar and you can kind of work out how you want it to sit and how you want it to be. But that is how I am going to do it. As I say, for the top kind of flourish on my advent calendar, I am using the Cricut 2mm chipboard. Thank you.